Hey, what's going on? Seth here. In this video, I want to give you a really quick look at a website called StoreTrack. If you're in the self-storage business, whether you're speculating and thinking about getting into it, or even if you're already in it, and you're trying to do some market research and understand the current supply and demand for self-storage in the markets where you're working or where you're looking to work, this resource is a huge deal. I only know of a couple of websites that do this. There's this one, and then there's Radius Plus, and I think it's kind of a similar thing. I've used this one more, but I'm just going to quick give you a tour and show you how it works. In fact, I'm only going to show you like a couple of the key features. There's a lot more to this than what I'll show you here, but I'll show you the ones that I think have been most impactful and helpful for me. So I'm going to go ahead and log in and then we're going to go to uh, explore here. Now, the subscription that I am currently paying for for StoreTrack is $99 a month, which if you're using it, it's totally worth that money. They offer a few different products here. If you're in the like vehicle RV boat storage facility type business, there's this that kind of shows you different information about that whole industry. I'm not going to get into that here. I'm going to show you the uh, self storage explorer. I think this is probably what most users are using. So I'm going to go ahead and open this and I've got the basic subscription. Apparently it looks like there's a more expensive one. And sometimes when you're paying like five to $7,000 for a feasibility study on a self storage facility, you might be buying or building. This is part of what they're doing. In fact, it's probably a big part of what they're doing is getting this kind of data and putting it in their report. So this is a way to kind of just cut out the middleman and get a lot of that stuff yourself. I don't mean to say this is a full feasibility study because it's not, but you'll see what I mean. Some of the important stuff is in here. And uh, the first thing I want to show you is just how you can understand supply and demand. And all you have to do is type in the address of whatever the location is where you're looking to buy or build. I don't even have a specific one in mind here, but if I did, I would type that out or the latitude and longitude, or I'm just going to go ahead and zoom in here. And uh, I'm just going to pick that one. Actually, that's kind of kind of weird. That's super rural. Let's find a more densely populated one. So let's pick right here in Colorado. And we're going to use that as the market center. So let's say we have a parcel of land where we're looking to possibly build. And what you'll see over here on the right is some very useful information once you can kind of decipher what it's telling you in terms of what the market area is in an urban area. It might be like three miles, meaning people who live within three miles of that location are considered your market area. Those are the people who will most likely rent a unit from you. If you're in a more rural area, it might be more like five or seven or 10 miles around it. That is considered your market area. So you can sort of tell it how far out you want it to go. And you'll see this little circle getting bigger. And these little dots that you see here, these are all self-storage facilities that are within that market area. And if you want to, you can click on each one of these things and click show profile. We can just see a lot more information in terms of like when it was last sold, the price it it was sold for the number of units and how many of those were self-storage versus parking units. What kind of company owns it, whether it's a REIT or like a mom and pop owner, you can see the total square footage of that facility. And you can do this for most of these things, like click on any of these dots. You'll find a lot of that same information. So just right off the bat, super helpful for understanding competitors and what they're offering to the market. It's not going to tell you what their occupancy rate is. You'd probably have to call them for that. But just understanding the sizes of them and, you know, what they sold for, that kind of thing, that can be super useful. But going back here, if we use this as the center of our market, wherever we want to click or if we, you know, type in an address there, it's going to tell us a lot of important information over here. Uh, the first thing that I always look at is the square foot per capita, which basically means how many square square feet of self-storage space currently exist per person in that market. If you've ever looked into this kind of stuff before, you may be familiar with some of the, you know, nationwide averages being around seven to eight percent square feet of self-storage per person nationwide. That doesn't mean it's too much or too little for the market. That's just what the nationwide average is. I've heard some people use those numbers as like, that's what it's supposed to be. It needs to be that or less in order to feel comfortable building something. I don't know if I go that far, but if you just want a super general, broad idea, that's seven to eight square feet per person is the average. So we can see right here, as of 2024, there was 4.43 square feet per person. So by that logic, this market is possibly being underserved if we were looking at that specific location and drawing this 10 mile radius. 
So this is not an exact science at all because we don't know how full these competitors are. We also have not yet looked at like the average annual income of the people that live around here, what the employment rate is. There's lots of different things that can impact the demand for self-storage and whether or not this is actually enough or too much or too little. But again, super broadly speaking, this is below the national average. So there's a clue that possibly there might be enough demand here to support a new one, depending on how big we make it and what sizes of units we build and all that kind of thing. That's another thing to understand is sizes of units do matter. Say if all these competitors, if all of their units are five feet wide by 10 feet deep, that's just a very different product than if we were to build one and make all the units 10 feet wide by 20 feet deep or 10 feet wide and 30 feet deep. Our units would be much bigger than the competitors and we're kind of offering a different sort of product for a different type of renter. Or if we were to offer climate controlled self-storage and none of the other competitors were, that would also be different. So it's lots of different things to think about, but just as a really quick glance, I come here a lot when I'm looking at either buying or building a new facility. And I just want to understand like, is this market like pretty well saturated or is it totally ignored and nobody's serving yet? This can tell you a lot of information here. I'll also tell you store track is not perfect. I'm not even exactly sure how they get all this information, but when I built my first new facility and we had done a soft launch, so it had been open for a couple of months, StoreTrack still had not seen that our location existed yet. They picked up on it a few months after it went live, but it's possible that there are active facilities that are not being picked up here. Also, if a new facility is currently under construction, they may have ways of picking that up, but I wouldn't necessarily expect to see that here as well. If you wanted to understand that, you'd have to dig a little bit deeper into the market you're working, maybe call the local building inspector and ask, hey, does anybody have outstanding building permits right now for your self-storage? And that would be probably the most accurate way to understand if that's happening. So I wouldn't expect like those finer details to show up here. But again, at a first glance, this is so much faster than trying to Google self-storage facilities in your area and try to understand which ones are actually within this radius and, you know, what the unit mixes are. Like, this just tells you all that stuff right here. We can also see down here, based on what we had set as our the center of our market, we can see uh, if there's any information about any known developments. So it looks like there is a mechanism to at least try to find that. We can see the total net self-storage rentable square feet. We can see the uh, rate summary in terms of 30-day averages of what these different competitors are charging for these different types of units. So that's super helpful to know. That's something you could spend a ton of time trying to investigate, whereas this just tells you right off the bat. List of facilities, looks like we got to upgrade for that. Developments for sale, got to upgrade. For so it sounds like they actually do have some of this information, but you got to pay for it. No surprise. So on this whole note about understanding supply and demand, if it's true that a underserved market is a market where there is seven to eight square feet of self-storage per person or less. If we pretend for a moment that that's factual, there's a really easy way to figure out which markets in any given state are the most and least saturated by that measurement. So we go up here to market discovery tool and we're gonna click on market rank and we're going to select the state where we're working. So now let's uh, pick Colorado. And we're going to go in here under category and we're going to look under market supply. And then for rank, we're going to rank this by square feet per capita. So we're going to select that. And what it's going to do over here is it's going to show you in the order of highest to lowest, or you could show lowest to highest, which cities have the most and least square feet of self-storage per person. And effectively what this is telling you is these are the markets that are most saturated and have too much self-storage. And these are the ones that are least saturated and don't have enough self-storage. And you can just basically cut to the chase and say, hey, if you want to build in an area where there is evidently not enough self-storage based on those national averages, go here first. Again, just super easy to understand. Hey, I want to build something. Where do I go to do it? And according to this, this is telling us, hey, Fort Carson, Colorado only has 1.36 square feet per capita, which is the lowest in the entire state. And you can do this for any state you want. So if we went to, I don't know, Florida and did it there. So this is telling us uh, Sorrento, Florida, that has an insanely high amount of square footage per capita. And uh, Florida is actually a little bit of a unique case because it, they have such a transient population there. So many people only live there part of the year. So their numbers can be a little skewed in making it look like they have too much self-storage when they actually don't. Because a lot of people store stuff even though they don't live there. So just keep that in mind. It's another interesting uh, wrinkle 
to think about when you're looking at this in any given state. But if we were to look at this backwards, so we can see other places where there's not nearly enough self-storage and there could be various reasons for that. Maybe other people have looked there and decided not to do it for reasons that we can't understand just by looking at these numbers. But whether you already have a location in mind or you're an open book and you'll go anywhere where the demand seems to be there, this will show you where the demand seems to be. And you might wonder like, why are you putting this information out there, Seth? Like, do you really want to give away your competitive edge? And I actually see it the other way around where I think there's a lot of rich people with money who think they should be building self-storage, but they do it in markets where they shouldn't be building it because it's already saturated. For example, I wouldn't want somebody building yet another facility in my market because it's not saturated exactly, but it's getting close to that. And before they make that decision to do that, I want them to look at the market with this information so they'll see, oh, maybe I shouldn't do it because there's already plenty of storage there. Instead, Instead, they should be using this kind of tool to understand where there is actually a need and build it there. The more people that have access to this information and actually know how to use it, the better it's going to be for everybody. Again, if you're in the self-storage business or if you want to be, before you do anything, use this kind of tool and educate yourself and understand where there's actually a need for self-storage. I'm not an affiliate of StoreTrack at the time of this recording. Maybe I will be in the future, but I want to put this out there because it's been super helpful to me. And uh, if you're in the self-storage business, it'll probably be helpful to you as well. I'll have a link beneath this video. Or you can go to retipster.com forward slash store track. It's S-T-O-R-T-R-A-C-K, as you're seeing here on the screen. Thanks for watching. Wish you all the best.